So the way that it works is that certain nodes who are um, forwarding packets that they see over MQTT to a centralized server that basically maps nearby nodes mm -hmm. are building a map of all Meshastic nodes out there. And in order for your device to be heard, it does not need to be forwarding over MQTT to the server. It just needs to be heard by a node that is. So there's a lot of these nodes around the country and or all over the place, actually. And I noticed in Los wow. Angeles, they actually provide exceedingly good resolution on the existing nodes. And I, I was like, all right, well, I wonder, I've been doing a lot of meshtastic experiments mm -hmm. uh, in Los Angeles. Can I actually see the, the nodes that I've placed? And then if so, um, is there interesting or, or cool information uh, to be gleaned from that? So I recently set up a node in Null Space Labs, my favorite hackerspace in Los Angeles, and it is located in Burbank. And here it is. They let me nice. set emojis. And for whatever reason, the imp emoji is one of the only ones that's uh, supported by default on the screen. <laughs> so uh, so here's my node. I can see it last checked in 16 minutes ago, which is pretty cool because I have not touched it, obviously, since mm -hmm. I was there like a week ago. Uh, and then I can also see some statistics about the local area. I can see the channel utilization is hovering around 23%. Which for Meshastic is kind of crazy. Like I very rarely saw this above like five percent for a very long time. Right. So it seems like the channel is becoming a little bit congested in the Los Angeles area. But when I click on View Full Details, it doesn't know what it is because this is my hardware that I built. That's why it says Private <laughs> HW because it's private. But it's mm -hmm. a nugget basically. It's it's a nugget with its Laura backpack and it's checking in. And I attached a sensor to it. So first of all, we uh, we have device metrics about the channel utilization. It's just cool to see that like channel utilization has gone up a little bit recently. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we also can see the environmental metrics that it's been recording. So I set this up with a temperature, humidity, and pressure sensor. And if I extend this to seven days, I can basically see the conditions inside of Null Space Labs, well, maybe 15 minutes or delayed or so, but in right. real time. And then also historic data that has been picked up by one of these nodes and then forwarded to the centralized server. So when I created this node, I thought like, okay, when I'm home, I'll be able to maybe check in on this and see what the temperature inside Null Space Labs is. No, that's not true. I could do an environmental study on, on when people right. are in Null Space Labs or when they turn the AC on. Um, so it's pretty remarkable to me that, you know, for a little bit of a, uh, like some of these nodes are like $16, like $30. Mm -hmm. You could set up something that you can check on from, you know, thousands of miles away. And for you anyway, it's not passed over the internet, but some right. other random project that's collecting this data and organizing it for people to find uh, is able to preserve this information and share it, which I think is very cool. I forgot to set this node to Fahrenheit, so that's unfortunate. But um, I can see <laughs> all sorts of information as well as things like trace routes and other things on this packet. Uh, so, the last thing I wanted to show off was being able to track things. So one of the use cases for Meshtastic is like a tracker, right? Like you have a device right. or, or, or a truck or, or cargo or your bag or something that you want to track. So instead of doing the, this off of centralized like cellular network, you would basically set this up to broadcast its position and just hope that somebody nearby picked it up mm. and forwarded it uh, and you were able to receive it. That's kind of the right. hope here. But the, the promise is it's off grid. So for me, um, I created a node called FBI open up and <laughs> The last time it was detected was as I was flying over the state of Nevada, um, somewhere near Reno. So uh, I enabled the location on this and it was picked up by a number, let me, this needs to be a little smaller. There we go. And it was picked up by a number of nodes over around the Central Valley of California mm -hmm. and then also the coast. So I was able to finally get a message 260 miles from my position all the way to the coast. Uh, oh. So theoretically they could have you know, told me what the water was like. <laughs> um, what's cool about this one is if I click on uh, view location data, let's mm -hmm. see, position, uh, show history, um, I can set it for seven days and I can see my exact flight path. Nice. So let me zoom out even more. So I can see my exact flight path and I can see my movements around Los Angeles in the days prior. So again, I did not know that this MQTT project was logging this data. Um, you know, it's cool. Right. It's fine. But it, it's a little strange in some ways that like without knowing it, when turn when I turn this on, you know, nobody knows exactly who's listening. But on yeah. Laura, anyway, I can see where my plane did a go around. I can see also what I went to my favorite coffee shop. I can see my trip to Null Space Labs also mm -hmm. with this node. So for learning about the position of something, this is pretty remarkable. That means that because yeah. of this project, if you have a device or something that you want to track around Los Angeles, you can do that in a quote off grid 
manner, right. meaning that somebody's attaching it to the grid, obviously on this mm -hmm. last step and allowing you yeah. to like, kind of find and collect the data. But at least in terms of setting up the tracker, it does not rely on cellular, Wi-Fi, or anything else. Right. It just broadcasts its position and then over the mesh net, it's picked up and displayed. Uh, and it's also stored and visualized in a historical right. sense. So that was amazing to me. Not only are there so many nodes out here now, but also the ability to like log moving nodes or positional nodes and see exactly where they've been to check out temperature sensing information for the last like, you know, like week or so, like that all kind of blew my mind in how easy and simple it was to set this up.